out to the stars And lose your heart The days gone by It's always the same You've got to change to carry on These days are gone
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Praise be God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our affliction and has enabled us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from Him. Thus be God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, at last the ashes of the rest of the enemy with the holy water that recall her by vision of which St. Paul writes, all of us who go by passing to Christ Jesus go by passing to his death. By baptism into his death, we will bury each other with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him by gladness to his death, so shall we be united with him by gladness to his resurrection. Let us pray. O oh God, who alone are able to give life after death, free yourself of the rest of the acne from all sins, that she who believe in the resurrection of your Christ may when the day of resurrection comes, be united with you in glory. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives to us with you, in the duty of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Jesus. Jesus raised his heart to heaven and said, Father, those whom you gave me as your gift to me, I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I may know to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it's gone. And its place rem remember it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children. My dear brothers and sisters, three verses of Psalm 100 and three that I shall recite it to you. Remind all of us that our life on earth is like flowers in the field. One day they are still there and beautiful, the next day they're gone. For unbelievers, it's very sad. When one of our loved ones died, but for us, as believers, as Catholics, we believe that our life is a journey, a journey from God, and now a journey back to God, a journey from birth to death. We are but travelers on a journey, pilgrims on a pyramid to God. For that reason, St. Paul describes life as a tent we live in. So if somebody lives in the tent, 
is because they are traveling and intended to move from one place to another. And a tent is only a temp temporary dwelling. It was a good description by St. Paul for the fact that we are only pilgrims in this world on a journey back to God, back to our heavenly homeland. Because we are but travelers, only pilgrims on our journey through life, knowing that our final destiny is with God. We keep our eye fixed on the fact that our destiny is eternal life and not just death. Just like the preface that I'm, I'm going to recite later, it said life is changing, not ending. That's what we believe. That gives us hope as a person of faith. And now, the scripture said, happy are now the dead who die in the Lord. The living are sad, mourning and grieving, but not the dead. That's why the scripture said, happy are the dead for they die in the Lord. Yes, they shall find rest from their labors for their good works accompany them. With all the good works that Mrs. Teresa Yackley has done throughout her life, Mrs. Teresa is now five rest in the Lord for all the hard work and labors that she had done throughout her whole life. Mrs. Teresa Yackley made Christ who was crucified and died for your sake, deliver you from eternal death. May Christ, Son of the living God, set you in the fresh beauty of his paradise. And may he, the good shepherd, claim you as one of his flock. And may he forgive you all your sins and grant you a place among the saints at his own right hand. There, May you ever behold your Redeemer face to face and ever stand before him and place in the ranks of the blessed. May you delight in the vision of God forever and ever. Now let us stand and pray. My dear brothers and sisters of the God of heaven, to listen to us. Let us pray together for our knees, knowing that we are being heard by a God who urges for our assistance. For our sister Teresa Joy, who lived a life of generosity and dedication to God and her family that she may be welcomed with love and joy into the heavenly home of the Eternal Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For her family, those who tirelessly offered support and care for Teresa, that they may be given hope, peace, and consolation, treasuring the memories we have of her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here to worship in faith, that the bonds which unite us may be strengthened as we look forward in hope to being united one day in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world and for this parish community, that we may strive to do God's holy will and we may be guided by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the divisions among Christians, that we may work together to bring healing and reconciliation as signs of God's reign. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and those facing health challenges, including Teresa's sister-in-law, Kathy, that they may be filled with courage, hope, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the good health and well-being of Teresa's grandson, Aaron, and his wife, Crystal, who gave birth to a baby boy named Cain, who is Teresa's 12th great-grandchild, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Teresa Joy, her dearly departed husband, Albert, and all who have died in faith, that they may be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, of which thou hear all of our prayers and conform us every morning to yourself. We ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated.
Para vender para a Francisa, dá mais até para esse imposto. E se a Portugal vai para a gente para. The sins of your departed servant, the rest of the angry, and purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those who was pressed in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Hey, truly, my sisters are doing it. Our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty, eternal, that through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of the blessed resurrection has known that no shadow by the certainty of life may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life will change, not end. It. And when this only world will turn to dust, an eternal world is made ready for them in heaven. And some will enjoy an adventure with pearl and holiness, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory, as with our head we are praying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. Have we never seen the sacraments of the only begotten Son who was sacrificed for us and rose with glory? We humbly implore you, O Lord, for your entire servant to raise the earthly, blessed by the past of history, see my glory in the gifts of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated again. Good morning. I'm Lou Ann Pope, the only daughter of Teresa and Albert, surrounded in this family by a fistful of brothers, precious sisters-in-law, and a gajillion sweet nieces and nephews. Teresa Joy D'Ambrosio Yackley, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. Mom lived up to her middle name, Joy. Although she had a rough childhood because her mom died at the age of 23 and mom was only four. I think that made her sweeter and kinder than most mamas. Since she had raised her children in her 20s, I think she was always young at heart, raising the six of us. As you know, she always had a smile on her face and approached life with gusto. She loved to dance and sing. I remember doing dishes with her when I was fairly young, and every night she would recite her mama's poem until I learned it. I washed up all my dishes and swept the kitchen clean, bathed my chubby rascals and sent them off to dream, she would start. It didn't take me too long to learn the fairly lengthy poem, along with harmony to many songs that she learned as a child many heartfelt and warm. At one point, I even knew the Richwood alma mater. And then there's always, I've got tears in my ears from lying on my back in my bed, dear while crying over you. I can still hear her singing that. She loved to tell us stories of her childhood. Some were sad and would make me cry, but often I learned a lesson from them. One of my favorites happened when she was pretty little. There was an older girl of maybe seven who talked her into going into the grocery store to steal a box of Jello. And then the two of them proceeded to dip their fingers into the powder and eat the sugary delight. I can only imagine she never noticed her red finger or even that she had red lips and a tongue as evidence, but her mom did. Vera asked her about it, and Mom said she would tell her if her mama promised not to whip her. So Vera promised, and Mom told. As her sweet mama took her by the hand and walked her down to the store to tell the owner what she had done, Mom kept crying, but you promised not to whip me. And Vera kept reassuring her, I'm not whipping you. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. I can remember mom taking us to daily mass to teach us to sit still in church. When we were two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12 lined up in the pew, we were complimented quite a lot for being so disciplined, just for being able to sit through the whole service, which in my early remembrance of the Latin mass was quite a feat. Now this is for eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. John 17, 3. When I was a tween, we often had a house full of extra teens. Mom loved to have lots and lots of extras, likely eating pizza and spending the night. Often I would find one or two of them sitting at the kitchen table talking about eternal matters with mom. She loved to go deep and wide with her conversations about God. Many of our friends would say that she helped raise them. We like to think that she and Mother Teresa were kindred spirits. She loved the unlovable. She saw the potential of the underdog 
She was as honest as they come, and she always had a smile on her face and lipstick on her lips. I remember when I was about 12 that she needed to put money into a parking meter, but the meter was broken, so what to do? Most people would walk away happy that they could cheat the system, so to speak, but our mom wasn't like most people. She left her money on top of the meter. This became indelibly etched into my soul, and that integrity shaped whom each of her six children were to become. She and dad raised us with responsibility in the forefront of our minds. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. As I think about each one of these attributes, there aren't a lot of people who embody all of them, but mom did. As I watched her live her life, she lived out her faith and always thought of others in all she did. As a guardian ad litem, she had a heart for children who lived in undesirable circumstances, most likely because she lived it too. But by the grace of God, she was an overcomer. It was fun having mom and Dalton for a short period of time in her later years. She and I worked out together. I can still picture her doing the 100 into her late 70s. She had so much energy and was so much fun. And I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, Joel 2.25. Mom's 80s took a toll on her as her Alzheimer's became a prison for her mind. I know that she would not have liked to have seen herself that way. One time she said to me, I have Alzheimer's, don't I? So the blessing was that as Alzheimer's slowly took her away from us, she didn't seem upset or agitated by her condition. She was always as beautiful as can be. A few years ago, I was wondering what it would feel like for her to leave this world. And I heard the Lord speak to my heart that after she enters the church triumphant, he would restore my memories of her pre-Alzheimer's days because her condition had overshadowed the woman she used to be. And he would restore her to her pre-Alzheimer's condition in heaven where her mind would be young and she so lovely. In the last few days preceding her death, I was so grateful to finally be able to visit her in person with Evan and a few days later with Chelsea and Anthony. I was blessed to be able to read her eulogy to her as though I was just talking friend to friend. Mama fiercely loved her family. She was so proud of each of her children and grandchildren. I know she would have loved to spend more time with each of you and get to know the new great-grandbabies in the family. But COVID was cruel, as we all know. I like to think that if she didn't have Alzheimer's, she may have said a blessing over each and every one of you. So let me do that for her. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make the, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Number 624. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? John 14, 2. That's such a comforting verse. Mom living in a room that Jesus prepared just for her with her beautiful smile, her warm laugh, and a song on her lips. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of our mom, Teresa, and the legacy of love that she left behind in her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. May we all strive to be grounded in love. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you.
plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Now is the uh, final recommendation and farewell to our uh, sister, the race of the afternoon. Loving God, whose son led us in the sacrifice of his body for the journey, mercifully led us strengthened by it. Our sister, the race of the come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, come to her aid, come to meet her, angels of the Lord.